Welcome to Module 5, Lesson 28, Solve Problems Using Line Plots. Line plots are a way to collect data along a number line. So, first of all, you need to decide what you're collecting data on. So, for example, this student wanted to collect data on his classmate's favorite books. Do you like the Harry Potter series, Lord of the Rings, Chronicles of Narnia, or Diary of a Wimpy Kid? Now, as the student collected data, you typically would collect with tallies. So, the first two students he talked to liked Harry Potter. Let me switch colors. And then another student said Chronicles of Narnia. And then there was three more who said Diary of a Wimpy Kid. Then another said Harry Potter. And someone said Lord of the Rings, even though they hadn't read it yet. And then another for Chronicles. And a couple more for Diary of a Wimpy Kid. And then a couple more came in for Harry Potter. You would take a look at this data and say, okay, so the lowest number was one vote. right here, and the highest number is five votes. So I could say that these, this scale could go anywhere from zero to five. Now in this one, since we're doing votes on a book, you could do your number line, instead of doing a scale from one to five, you could label it by the books. So you could say this is the votes for Harry Potter, this is the votes for Lord of the Rings, this is the votes for Narnia, and these are the votes for Wimpy Kit. And then you simply plot. Remember, this is called line plot data. So you plot your data above each one. So for Harry Potter, I have five votes, and I label those with X's. Sometimes people use dots. Lord of the Rings had one. Narnia had two. And Diary of Wimpy Kid had five as well. And then I am finished. Now, you get this little visual here. This is my line plot. It's like a comparison bar graph, huh? You can see that these two had the same amount. You can see the least amount. You can see what's in the middle. You can find the difference between these two, the difference between these two, the difference between these two, and on and on. So how does this connect to today's work? Well, right away with today's work, they have given you data. Now, instead of favorites, which a lot of students like to do, this is the length of a shoe of each of these students. So you have to find out on your scale what's the lowest these shoe size could be and what's the highest. Well, if you take a look at this, nobody has a shoe size smaller than 7, and no one has a shoe size higher than 9, with 8 being in between 7 and 9. So this would be a good scale to use. Notice I didn't start at 0. You don't always have to start at 0 to do this. I want to know about the information here. Now, every time I find a match on my number line, I have to label it. So, I, I do notice that I have Lilius at a perfect 8. So, this student would be right here with a shoe size of 8. I also have a couple 8.5s, right? I have Colin, Lilius is done, and I have Susan, who also have 8.5s. So, I could go ahead and mark a half and then say that I had two students at eight and a half. I also have Ben, whoop, Ben at seven and a half. I also have, nope, no more seven and a halfs, done. Now I have some fourths. I have, to redraw my hash marks so that I have fourths in between, and I gotta find eight and three fourths. 7 and 3 fourths, 7 and 3 fourths, and 7 and 3 fourths again. A lot of students had that shoe size. Okay? And you can see that on your scale, the smallest size is all the way on the left, the largest size is over to the right. The one that most occurs is the highest one. Okay? So, you have to use this information to answer some questions. So, what does the line, ta the line plot tell you? So, I've redrawn mine here. And I want to start with A. Who has a shoe length one inch longer than Dickon? So Dickon had seven and three fourths, so one inch more would be eight and three fourths. So that's Mary. So you could type it in. Mary has a shoe length that is one inch 
longer than decon. All right, and you place that in there as your answer. How about B, who has a shoe length when it's shorter than Susan? So Susan, where she, Susan is eight and a half, when it's shorter would be seven and a half. So you'd have to write about Ben having that one. All right, you could pause it and write that on your own. I'm gonna to skip to the next question. I'll skip a couple actually, let's skip down to E. So looking at E on your work today, compare the shoe length of Ben versus Francis with the comparison sign. So let's find Ben and Francis. So Ben would be seven and a half. Francis would be seven and three fourths. And you can even see on your number line or your line plot, sorry, that seven and a half would be here and Francis seven and three fourths would be here. So he is closer, Francis is closer to the eight. He is farther, so his shoe size is larger. And then finally, how many students had shoes that measured less than eight inches? On this, the plot comes in handy. Here's eight. How many are less than eight? Well, you just count what's remaining here. So I have this section of shoes, which would be four. So type that out as a statement. Four shoes are less than size eight. All right. There you go. All right. If you have any more questions on answering the remaining questions about line plots or making your own line plots, then please see me and I'd be glad to help. Thanks.